get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It Restoration. Welcome to another edition of the Service Guys podcast. I'm producer Ruel Abadam, and on the other end of the mic, his own mic, not mine, is uh, our service professional, Lonnie Beecham. Hey, Lonnie. Hey, Ruel. How are you? <laughs> I am fantastic. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm trying to answer like we hadn't just chatted for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Which the listener will likely hear about here at told towards the tail end of the recording. <laughs> That's where they seem to seem to go in, so right, yeah, or, I, or at the beginning. I, uh, let's let's talk about that for a minute. How do, what do you think about uh, how that's been uh, going? Do you, do you, I think it's kind of fun. What do you think? Oh, just the random stuff that I'm spewing out of my pie hole while yeah. I'm waiting on everyone to get on the line. Your yeah, or bunghole, whichever hole that you we want to use uh, describe. <laughs> yeah, so you just learned what a bunghole was. Yeah, I do. I thought bunghole was just a cool, funny word that you would you said in the mid '80s to describe, uh, you know, uh, the back hole. And uh, I googled it just to try and figure out what movie might have said it. And it's like, oh, look at that! It's a real thing. I'm an idiot. Yep, yeah, it's a real thing. <laughs> I was probably 12 when I learned that, and I giggled. So, yeah, I, I still uh, giggle. So, I, I, I um, you know, our, our, our friend Jackie Jones. I, uh, mm-hmm. I, I texted her, and uh, like an idiot, I, I, uh, I, I texted her something that she already knew about, and I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I, then I called myself a bunghole out of you know, uh, real, real quickly, and didn't realize that I had just use that word which you know i haven't heard since the mid 80s and she thought it was amusing then i had to google what, the, what did i just call myself <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah yeah that, you know i like that i mean even uh, in my um in my um uh, you know conversations with the uh, radio producers for for my radio ad one of the guys said we should just record our conversations and then piece it into a radio ad because i'm talking off the cuff and accidentally yeah. and then like let's go in there and record you and then i get in front of the mic and i'm like uh this is uh uh this is uh lonnie <laughs> i can't i can't talk in front of a, a microphone with a producer staring at me i mean sometimes i can read it or you know just say it uh one take and be out the door in 10 minutes and then we we've, we've tried to take the same stuff I was saying in our meetings and put it on paper and, and then knowing that I'm being recorded, it, I just can't do it sometimes. Oh yeah, I get it. I get it. It's a little bit of stage fright, which I get a whole lot of. Like for some reason, you know, um, we get into our, our conversations with guests and, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm walking into a, a room um, in, for, an in, for an industry that I really have no clue about. So then I'm like, okay, let's. I just need to find out what, what's, uh, what it's all about, and uh, you know, so I just sit back and listen and try and get a handle on things, and that's you know, and then, then later on, you know, you remind me like, well, hasn't really said much this episode again. I'm like, dang, I gotta fix uh, that, you know. I'm just trying to, trying to mess with you. No, I, 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 I in there somehow. Yeah, I know there's I know there's a level of messing with me, and you know I have no problem with it. But uh, you know, it just I guess I get all internal and reflective and all that stuff about you know what uh, how things are going. So, oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some pretty good feedback on the podcast. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know if you caught I I talked about uh, this podcast on uh, my my other podcast. You know, like I did. I did I, catch that. Yeah, and for the listeners here, I basically told, I talked about Lonnie on this podcast, and I said that I'm really, really proud at the job that Lonnie is doing. That he's grasped, you know, being a podcaster very quickly, and bring, you know, I mean, it's real. It's real. You, you, you're, you know, lining up all of these guests, and this podcast has is evolving into something that I never imagined that it would be. So nicely done. Yeah, it's taking a taking a little twist, bringing in friends that are not 
true, you know, blue collar service provider people. But when I started looking back at, you know, people I know and stuff, everybody has a service, whether they're in home or they come to you or ship vitamins to you or whatever, there's always a service aspect of it. So, and I'm learning that we're basically all in the same business. Yeah. We all want to take care of the customers. We all want to take care of people. We want to provide something that help others. And, uh, and then along the way, you know, get paid for it, uh, where, where, where it counts. Right. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I looked at a job today that I don't even know if I can even help these people. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what, something you hear a service guy tell you very often. What I mean, if you if you can talk about it, what's what is it? Is it like like a skyscraper full of bat guano, and you know, there's no way oh, that's going to. I wish. <laughs> I wish that is actually one of my things. I've been on a mission for for years to learn how to handle large jobs like that, filled with pigeon droppings or bat guano or whatever. But you now today's job was um, they have a very weird mold situation and it's an unfinished barrage just raw concrete no painted concrete or nothing just concrete and they got this pink mold from one side to the other probably eight feet eight nine feet tall 20 feet wide and then it wraps down the sides of the garages as well and it's kind of weird because there's really no real evidence of where the water's coming in except well one area you can see where there's a crack and okay but i mean i got a new driveway they don't see the water coming in i couldn't find the water and so i actually had to refer him out to an in, a structural engineer to get him to come in and take a look at this and try to pinpoint where this water moisture is coming from before i go and remove the mold because it's kind of silly to spend that kind of money for mold remediation when it's going to come right back. So, so you yeah, have, uh, so you have this structure, this concrete structure, and I'm imagining like big slabs of poured concrete. And then for some reason, mold is present on, 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 yes. on multiple sides of this concrete. Mm -hmm. So could you like, in theory, like, um, you know, I don't know. Let's just let's pretend we're in the movies. We take a dead body, and then we pour concrete all over it, and make it a part of a wall of a structure. You know, would that produce mold that would leach out somehow? Uh, would there be enough moisture in a body? And it, it would would being in, <coughs> surrounded by concrete would that would that allow mold to grow? Well, let me stop and think about this one, Ruel. I've never <laughs> thought about putting a body in a wall. Uh, well, knowing what like I know about that, there okay. is enough moisture. There, there would be enough moisture in a decomposition to grow mold for sure. Um, but I would venture to think you could see the outline of the ooze coming out. You'd think you'd see a body, the shape of a, you know, the mold would be growing in a pattern of a body. But I don't know. I'd be more concerned about the structural integrity of the building if you decided to bury a body in concrete. It will break down eventually. So on concrete slabs are usually 12 inches, roughly. 9 to 12 inches. And so you'd have to dig a hole, bury the body, cover it with, 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 um, with the concrete. And I would think that that... that section of where the body was at would be the weakest point and it would crack and crumble out and then the body would be exposed so i don't think jamie hoffa this is a long way to go around <laughs> but i don't think jamie hoffa is buried in giant stadium because i think it would have come out somehow some way by now so that's an interesting question well and i'm actually kind of scared to say i know you <laughs> They said about eight or nine feet high. Well, that's a, that, that, that's a tall body. Then you're like 20 feet wide or something. Like, that's a lot of bodies. <laughs> yeah, just your standard concrete uh, foundation wall. The floating concrete floor that has a garage over it. And this is a lower bay garage, double bay garage. And um, 
Yeah, concrete floor, concrete walls, concrete ceilings with one window and two garage doors, and and a nice nice garage. But uh, yeah, so I actually told okay. them they need to call somebody else to find where this water's come, fix that water, then let's get rid of the mold. Yeah, in good yeah. conscience, I can't I can't take your money knowing that in a year from now you're going to be hating me whenever it comes right back. Gotcha. The one that got away. Oh, it, it'll come back. They got a real issue, but they're ready to dig up the floor drain and everything. And so we, I tested the floor drain. It's like, nope, it's not your floor drain. And I didn't think it was. And like, well, we'll have our plumber look. And I was like, well, I can test it for you right now. Just throw a hose in it, crack it wide open and, and uh, if it handles the water, then it's working. If it's backing up, then you got a problem. But that wouldn't be the that wouldn't be twenty feet wide by eight feet tall and down the sides of the of the structure. So, so um, since I brought it up, um, since I brought up death earlier, any uh, any new dead animal cleanup jobs lately? Uh, not dead animals. I did look at. Um, well, that reminds me. I need to get back to them. I did look at one of the worst bat dropping jobs. I think I sent a video. Hey, yeah, I, I did send a video to you last week. That was yes, one of the worst did. bat bat dropping jobs I've seen in a while. If you recall, just opening the hatch took almost a full minute because all all the turds were just falling down all over and. Uh, didn't want to just make a huge mess we were trying to keep most of it on the on the lid that we were lifting but yeah right now we're in heavy bat cleanup season here in the next couple of weeks i'll be in that i'll be in that um in that attic cleaning that out works out good that uh can't get rid of bats out of attics until after august 15th um so and by september mid-september we're cooling off so Getting in the attic in September is a lot, or October is a lot better than uh, getting in an attic in July. Yeah, I remember the video. Slowly trying to open up that, uh, I don't know, what do you call it? The, uh, the, the, the hatch. The hatch, hatch. And, and all of that crunchiness. Was, was, was that me hearing things, or was it all kind of no, crunchy? Was, I, it was dried, and so it just sounded like, I don't know what it sounded like. Sound pebbles. like breakfast, breakfast cereal. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, just the, yeah, had that crunchy sound as it was tinging, you know, hitting the ladder and the floor and the plastic. We had plastic up and, you know, trying to protect the hardwoods. But, um, yeah, yeah, that, you, imagine? You, you, were, you were hearing, you were hearing the, the, the bat guano dropping out of the ceiling. You're trying to imagine, you know, keeping it in a bowl, pouring some milk over it and hearing it snap crackle mm. and 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 whatnot who was who was filming i was i was thinking man did lonnie's got some good tripod action going to get a picture of this oh that that was scott holding it holding the camera holding his phone all right shout out to scott he listens to the podcast right uh no <laughs> never mind forget scott <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yeah, but uh, and then I talked to another old man for a mold job today, and uh, he was mad at me because I couldn't come give him an estimate for mold remediation. The uh, I got a, a, a eight month old lab report. Not oh, I'm sorry, an eight month old visual inspection. No samples, no testing, no nothing. Didn't know what kind of mold it was. Didn't know where it was at in the house. And then he wanted me to come give him a bid. And then, you know, for 20 minutes, he kind of screamed at me and tell me, oh, you all are just a bunch of crooks and making me spend all this money. And I don't want to spend that kind of money for testing. And meanwhile, I'm sitting there thinking, well, if you don't want to spend the 500 bucks for the lab work, you're not going to want to spend my five grand or more to just walk in the door to get rid of it. So, uh, yeah, that, that was that was interesting. I got you. He just couldn't understand why I needed lab results, and yeah, yeah. That so that I reminds me. That reminds me of the the conversation on uh, the Craig episode. You and he were kind of getting into it about 
things with water damage and you were talking about how you know water moves and so what it is right now you know down you know as time goes by it's gonna be um there's gonna be more damage right and so i'm, right. guess, I'm guessing what you're describing is same thing with mold you mean how it was several months ago when they had that lab done if you do the lab today it could be far more worse and and you can't right. do an estimate on something that was that old because potentially your job was going to be more because time has passed. Is that right? Right. Yes. And the, 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 the true crux of mold remediation is actually water damage. It's basically uncontrolled water damage. So it still gets back to what I was saying with Craig that, you know, a water damage estimate when it's fresh is only good for about two hours. Well, now it's, you know, seven, eight months later, the mold damage is, you know, now, now it's rotting the wood framing. I mean, potentially, it's not uncommon. We have to tear out load-bearing walls because the only thing that's really holding them together is is the drywall and the you know the, the sheetrock and and um, you start taking it apart and and one of the things I'll notice is you can see the sag in the floor and that's that's the load-bearing wall crumbling, literally crumbling from the mold. And then right above that sag, you'll start seeing stress fractures in the drywall in the living room, even though it's water damage is in your basement. So, yeah, it, it's much cheaper to prevent mold than it is to get rid of mold. So in these situations, I have to now do some temporary framing that can support the house and bring in those uh, pylon jacks and stuff and kind of bring the floor back up to where it was supposed to be shore it up with some temporary framing just to be able to rip out that wall and you know do do my job and then they have to leave it you know temporarily framed up like that until they can get a you know a builder in there to put the wall back in and secure it and you know make make it right and so yeah it's much cheaper much more efficient to take care of the water damage when it's fresh yeah, I keep forgetting that <clears throat> essentially it's it, it's water damage that can lead to the mold damage. Right. Without, with, if water is not present, then you don't have a, a mold issue. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because I was thinking about the conversation with Andy on uh, the last episode. Uh, he had a question about how to remove mold from a shower that just kept coming back <laughs> and my idea of using a uh, <laughs> a male enhancement product uh, app applying a male enhancement product to the mold would not remove the mold i thought it was hilarious because it, <laughs> it, yeah, so. it threw a mold that would work <laughs> it did <laughs> yeah that is a good sport yeah that's awesome <laughs> Cool. Yep. So I'm on, I'm actually on the countdown now. I got 20 days until I fly out to Seattle. I'm already uh, booking out jobs for the week. Well, I got stuff that's want, you know, that's needing to start happening the week that I'll be in Seattle, but I can't start a, you know, 10 day project with only a uh, two day window to work. So that week I'm basically taking the whole week off and, um, yeah, and then whenever I get back, I'll be back to running knee deep in mold damage, and and uh, I'll I'll be shutting down. Probably end up shutting down a mold job that should come online by then. I'll be shutting it down on Tuesday and having the post test done the Monday whenever I get back. And uh, yeah, cool, well, good time. Yeah, I hope you have fun and and. Uh, I was just thinking, have you ever seen that TV show, Monk? No. Have you ever heard of it? No. So it's set in San Francisco, and it's, he's a detective, and uh, the, the character Monk. And uh, I think he's like OCD or something, right? He's So he's peculiar. He likes to step on the sidewalk a certain way. He likes to wear his clothes a certain way, everything's sort of in its, in its own kind of order and he sees the world in his own special way. And I was thinking, you know, 
what's it like for you knowing what you know about water and damage and mold do you like go to airports and visit these other towns and sort of like you know like yep there's mold there yep there's water damage happening there and and you're like looking all over the environment and like dang there's this this place has issues and uh, and then I, I start imagining what if Lonnie was monk kind of had these sort of OCD yeah. tendencies how would he get around he would be spotting everything that was water damaged everything that was developing, developing mold <laughs> oh you find- real you uh Oh, you, you're, you're nailing me. Um, my friends and family, when we go anywhere, I don't care if it's just to the local, you know, restaurant near my house or Walmart or, you know, you name it. I, I can, I pick apart buildings all day, every day. And I can see their, their band-aid attempt of trying to fix their mold issue. And, and, uh, I can see what the mold issue is. And, and instead of fixing it right, they just, I just keep watching them paint it over with kills and, and, and yeah, all day long. And my family says, my wife says, can't you just turn it off? But actually I got my daughters now. They're, they're kind of tuned into it. They don't even really know a whole lot, but they, they point it out to me half the time before I do. They're like, look, dad, look over there. They've had a air conditioner leak in their ceiling. <laughs> I just crack up my wife. Oh, like, that's Funny. fantastic. You're corrupt. You're corrupting the girls. I'm like, well, they just listen to their dad. I just go in and I'm like, yeah, look at that. See that brown spot? Now look there, hon. That brown spot tells me that that water is dry, but it has been a repetitive leak. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I do. I do that. I do that. I just keep my mouth shut. I don't sit there and go tell them, hey, look at, look at this. You should, do, there, you should try this. Their mold whispering abilities have matured, and now they, their true powers have presented themselves. <laughs> Yeah, and it's fun. I like it. My wife, it drives my wife nuts, but hey, she's put up with me for 19 years of marriage, so she's used to it by now. Speaking of spots and stuff, like in a kitchen, if you look up in a ceiling in some kitchens and you see spots on the ceiling, what's that about? Do you know what I'm talking about? And commercial, like restaurant kitchens or your your own kitchen? Residential. Well, um, it, it could be, man, it could be a number of things. Years ago, I, rem- I remember camping down a bottle of um, ketchup, and uh, somehow it ended up squirting to the ceiling. So it could just be food. You don't think about it when you make chili. I hear you talking about making chili all the time. You drop that, that ladle in there. Uh, sometimes it'll splash up, and it'll, one tiny little speck will get up there. It could also be when you got a house full of kids, kids don't always make the best decisions. And just because you've never seen them throw food, they they could be flinging it up on the ceiling as well. Or you could get into a real serious hygiene issue. Uh, you can actually, this is gross, but you can actually see uh, fly poop if, if you don't, you know, get rid of the flies or clean up after them. They do actually leave uh, feces everywhere that they, they eat and take a dump just like you and i do so so i don't know what those spots i don't know what you're talking about but it could be it's most likely food related or if it's really gross it could be you know fly crap sitting on your ceiling oh i've never i've got a google for fly crap because i i know what flies but i've never thought about you know what do fly what does fly poop look like it's kind of like pigeons you see pigeons everywhere but how often did do you get to see like pigeon chicks you know Kind of uh, like, I, I do all the time in attics. Okay. Well, you're special. You have access. <laughs> you have the special access to the, pit, the world of yeah, pigeons. Yeah, bell towers. Bell yeah. towers have them. And, you know, upper high. Well, actually, a month, two months ago, I was uh, called up to the university, our flagship university, and they uh, they wanted us to do some uh, pressure washing of, of and, you know, clean up the pigeon crap that was everywhere inside they had ductwork for some reason running out there and then they did a they did a horrible band-aid job of trying to put up some netting that didn't uh that, that wouldn't let the birds in well it worked in the middle section somewhat but they left the ends wide open so the pigeons just flew right in the middle and then or right out right at the edge and went to the middle where they couldn't be messed with and you know one one 
one hen is just sitting there on its on its egg and eyeballing us and squawking every time we were looking at it and, and uh couldn't do that job either just because i couldn't get my my equipment my trucks in there because they're all box trucks and it's like a seven foot ceiling and well my box truck 11 feet tall and then uh, so i'm looking at running everything up and over the the edge of the third story uh, parking garage and well they got all kinds of greenery and trees and pretty stuff all around the place for like hundreds of yards and it's like oh, i can't even get my truck near the place so yeah i see lots of pigeons dropping but uh yeah just walking down the streets of san francisco you probably see more homeless droppings than you do pigeon droppings yeah well i see a lot of homeless i'm i don't know oh, on occasion yeah the, i'll 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 see them squirt, but I won't see them squat, which I'm I'm thankful for. Well, I read an article. You you might want to go apply for this, but I I, I read an article that they're paying people one hundred eighty thousand a year to go clean up the the squattings of the homeless in downtown San Francisco. Just a thought, if you want to get out of IT and put you in the I'm city a- every day, but for one hundred eighty grand, I I could. I could go poop, be a pooper scooper. Sounds sounds like an opportunity. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to begin. I mean, you know, like, do I need special training? Because I can do the job without any special training. But maybe I'm an idiot and I do need special training on how to handle um, the uh, the matter. <laughs> well, I know in the house you need special training and you have to wear special PPE, personal protective equipment. You have to handle it uh, properly. Uh, I don't know if they just give them a dustpan and a broom and dustpan and say, go to it. Or I, I don't know what they do, but I, I was reading about that. I was like, Oh, that's a thought of you. I was like, if yeah, you want a career there, change. There, there's, there are spots around where I work where for whatever reason, the sidewalk, a certain spot, part of the sidewalk on a certain street is favored as far as, you know, um, if I was a homeless guy, I'd be, I'd be sitting on this spot and I, I can't figure figure out why, why not, you know, 50 feet down that way or the other direction. And, um, the only thing I'm thinking of is, um, it's like at the side of a business that has a, a side door for a, uh, like a Walgreens or a CVS or one of those types of stores and maybe maybe someone in the store you know has handouts and gives them stuff every now and then that to help them you know help help them out yeah I don't know usually has to do with food food water and shelter yeah usually where they congregate if they have one or all three here's one thing I saw the other day was I saw on a spot it was sort of like zone for someone homeless was, would, would be hanging out and doing some panhandling but the person was putting on a jacket putting on like a, a really cruddy wig and then a cap over the wig and i was thinking wait a minute is this person impersonating homeless just so that he can try to like <laughs> get sympathy or is he really homeless and he's just trying to you know enhance his look so that he can increase his chances of getting handouts I, was, I thought it was Where is he trying to help his dignity? I don't know. I've always heard that those panhandlers in my parts make five hundred bucks a day, cash. That's what I've always heard. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know you who know, they are that says that, but I was like, man, five hundred bucks a day, cash. I mean, that's <laughs> that starts adding up fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have to bypass that the the poop cleanup job in the city to just uh, you know do a little panhandle. Panhandle. Yeah. Well. Think about it. Yeah, if you want to have uh, an extra fifty grand in the bank, you just all you got to do is save two hundred and fifty dollars a day on your on a working day. So twenty yeah. twenty days out of the year, two hundred and fifty bucks a day. Well, I, mean, oh. I get I get that it can get hard. Um, what what eats me up is seeing like the mom with the little child, and uh, you know out there just sitting on a yeah. sidewalk. You know, it eats me up. Because I, I have, oh, yeah. I, I, I have, you know, several mouths to feed in my household, and and uh, to be to be out there and to, to at that level, it's like, you know, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it, it's sad. 
I don't know how we got to talking about homeless, but um, I guess pooper scoopers and 180,000 a year to scoop poop. But <laughs> so, so Ruel, now that, you know, now that you and I talk a lot and pretty often and stuff, are you starting to notice news articles or Yahoo news, or are you starting to see more indoor air quality type articles and news and uh, news casts and stuff like that? It's kind of like when you buy that, you know, blue Ford, to- uh, Ford uh, Taurus. Now everybody in the in the world has a blue Taurus, but are you noticing more indoor air quality mold type articles out and about? No, I haven't. Are you talking about just in general, like uh, products using indoor air quality as a sort of marketing feature to try and make their products stand out, or are you just talking in general, like the industry or? Oh, in general, both marketing products. Um, just news articles, um, you know, stuff like that. I was, I was just curious. I hadn't ever asked you that, but I probably yeah. should ask you that off the air so that um, we could have, we <laughs> wouldn't have to ask you. And you say, uh, no, I haven't seen any. <laughs> no, it, I have not. And that's primarily because I, uh, I don't watch that <laughs> much television or subscribe to the news. Um, yeah, that's just by design because the, the few times that, I've been around with the family and the news has been on like at restaurants or whatever. It's just like, you know, the garbage that you try to avoid on a Facebook news feed. Yeah. I don't, I don't watch much television myself and the news is always sky falling stuff. You can't control. And it's just there to anger one side or the other. And I don't care if it's a school board issue or a Supreme court nomination. It's just all about, making people angry so i just i i personally don't watch much news but yeah or, yeah. or television yep there you but go but of course i subscribe to uh news wires that if it mentions mold or mold damage mold damage lawsuits and i obviously i obviously get notifications of it but i'm in that industry so yeah that, it's like that's like you watching the the latest apple trends or the latest whatever computer yeah, trends well, I, I'll, I do, uh, <clears throat> I do subscribe to searches that are for certain keywords just to see what comes up out of the internet. Um, so that's actually something that would be good for me to add. And that way, if something cool and interesting comes up regarding, you know, indoor quality, uh, indoor environment, you know, quality, uh, you know, maybe you can pull it up for one of these episodes and, and talk through stuff. That could be cool. Yeah, and a lot of it's kind of junk. Uh, what I see uh, around the flood areas, you know, where we just had this tropical storm, Florence or whatever, go through. Uh, a lot of it's uh, so so uh, so left field. Was, oh, wipe it down with bleach. Wipe it down with vinegar. Dry it out. Paint it with kills. Call it good. It's like <laughs> if you're seeing mold on the outside of the wall, it's as bad, if not 10 times worse inside. Cause that's where mold likes to grow is in dark, dark, so, wet, so, moist environments. So you said paint it with kills. Is that what you said? Yes. That's, can, um, can you break that have, down? Have you, ever, have you heard of kills? No, I haven't. So yeah. Oh, uh, it's, it's a stain blocking paint. It's usually white. You can get it pigmented. I mean, you can add color to it as well, but, uh, it's, it's a great stain blocker. But it's not going to kill mold. It's not going to get rid of mold. It's not going to hide mold. It, it only hide it until the mold just eats the paint and <laughs> grows through it. So it's it it. different from like a varnish or a, or a, lac, what do you call it, a lacquer? Yeah, sh- shellac or lacquer and, and, and that. That's more of a clear, kind of like polyurethane. It, you know, it's more, that's more put on wood to uh, bring out the, well, to protect the wood and give it a basically a hard coat or hardwood floors. That, that's a varnish, shellac, uh, polyurethane. Totally different. Same concept, just different. Um, your, your shellacs and your polyurethanes don't hide blemishes, but, but kills will hide blemishes. So if you've got a bunch of food spots on your ceiling, go paint it with kills and then paint the whole ceiling, and you're good. You'll never see that again. Funny you brought up ceilings, because I asked earlier about spots on a ceiling. And uh, if I can kind of bring that back around real quick, the reason why I brought that up was 
I always imagined that somehow all of like the cooking and the steam and all of that, you know, moisture in, in the, in that, in the kitchen that comes from all of the, the activity in the kitchen somehow causes those spots to occur. I had never thought about, you know, there could have been in the past just for some unknown food splatter and, and, uh, and then the next thing you know, someone's just trying to paint over it thinking that, uh, you know, that'll, that'll take care of it, but I can clearly and, see and you are, <clears throat> Go ahead. you are onto something though. It could be, it could be kind of like Andy's shower that you talked about last year that, or last week that did, didn't have a, a exhaust fan in there. It, it could be mold growing just from the humidity in the air. Okay. You know, okay. if you don't turn your AC on soon enough and when it gets muggy and humid inside, then, uh, it, it could be, it could be spots of mold. Ah, yeah, that was that was right. my, my concern. The source would be, you know, your bone broth cooking that you do and, you know, cooking and, you know, boiling, you know, veggies and stuff like that. It, it could be mold. That's probably food splatter. It usually is. Gotcha. <clears throat> cool. So what else is going on today? Today, it's just... You know, I, uh, not related to this podcast. Well, let's talk about related to this podcast on the web end of things. You know, I'm really, I, I'm, I want to build up, um, the, the episodes as far as a web presence and, um, you know, use that to, to, you know, have more of a, I don't know, content presence, a searchability presence, you know, for, for restored restoration and the podcast, so you know, and as as I go through that that process and planning, you know, I realize you know there's other things that can stand to be improved on. So you know, there's there's always work to be done um, when we're not recording and editing podcasts, you know, and 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 and, and uh, looking looking at guests. There's uh, there's always that uh, other stuff in the background to try and work on. Always lots to do. Yep, and that's why you do what you do because I don't know what I don't know what all that means. <laughs> don't want to know either, to be honest. I know there's people that eat it up, and I'm glad you do what you do. Yeah, I for some reason uh, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, for some reason you do what you do. Yeah, I'd rather you trying to you know find your way into a crawl space full of bat droppings than me <laughs> that would be a first actually bat droppings in a in a crawl space i guess it could happen oh see i'm an idiot i don't even know the difference between an attic and a crawl space <laughs> <laughs> well they usually go up high but um no we find animals dead animals and living animals in crawl spaces and water damage and sewer damages in in crawl spaces yeah i, w I will not crawl in an attic or or a crawl space without full PPE because too many hazards just usually camouflaged or unknown even just, ah, I'm not going to open up Pandora's box and not have some protection in place. This Actually, one of the scariest, scariest things ahead. that I deal with is, uh, I can't tell you how many times a homeowner will have done their own demolition for water damage or mold or whatever the issue is. And I just walk in and I just see, oh, there's a big pile of asbestos laying in the floor. And it's like, wow, that scares me. Like, I fully believe that I, I will die of mesothelioma. Fully believe that. Wouldn't shock me. Uh, just because of stuff like that, people not knowing any better, just ripping into their walls that's covered in asbestos or tearing out stuff that's asbestos and they don't know any better and and I walk and I, in to try to help them. It's like, oh, oh, wow, let me go get my suit. Well, I don't know any better either. What does asbestos <laughs> look like? Um, well, it, it's in a lot of stuff. It's in drywall, or it can be. It, it's uh, a lot of your popcorn ceilings have it. Um, I don't know. How, it, it looks like, hmm, how, do I, how do I describe what asbestos looks like? Well, you know, I've, I've like been in hair. I've, it looks like hair. Huh. Uh, a lot of a lot of schools, um, like I was just in our high school looking at a mold situation, 
and they they had to remove remove all the asbestos. And when you see the the, the acoustic uh, ceiling treatments in, in big, usually industrial warehouse or industrial spaces like schools and cafeterias and gymnasiums and stuff, a lot of times that's asbestos. But it can also be in something as benign as drywall. Really, and it, well, it has the same the sort of hair. Thing. Yes, when you get get up to it and you start, if you were to cut into it, you would see a lot of hair-like follicles. Um, what was I going to say? The um, oh, you're if you have an older house and you have exposed uh, ventilation ductwork, that white tape that's around the joints. That's almost always asbestos. Uh, nine by it doesn't have to be nine by nine tile, but those uh, VC. Do you know what VCT uh, vinyl composition tile? Uh, the the floors that you see at your uh, Walmart or schools or you know those, those squares that are glued down. That's called yeah. VCT. Yeah. Usually, if if it's a nine by nine, I have that tested every time because it almost always comes back. But that that's non friable. That that stuff that that's non friable means it doesn't get in the air as 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 much as like a boiler wrap or something. So that we can take care of easy. But um, your old vinyl, that's where I get. That's where I see. That's where I see the uh, piles of asbestos. Somebody has a water leak in their house. It was built 1950, and and they've had you know, over the 60 years they've had you know three layers of vinyl added over each other and, and one or all of them can be, can be, uh, tested positive for asbestos and they're just in there ripping it out. And, and the black mastic, the black glue that you see under all, all that old VCT or old, uh, vinyl, uh, sheet good <clears throat> linoleum is another word for the sheet goods. Uh, that's almost always, um, uh, asbestos as well. Do you do the asbestos testing? Or do you have do you like take some material and put it in a little a little uh, tube and shake it around with some liquid and do it that way? Is how how is that how does that happen? Um, I always have a third party do the testing because it requires a microscope. I I will send in to the lab some asbestos stuff depending on what it is. I'll just sub out a, an asbestos specialist to come in and and uh, test it and then it depending on what, what type it is, whether I can handle it in-house, certain kinds, no, I'm not even going to attempt it. Uh, just sub them out, let them do their thing, and then I'll come back in and do do my thing. So it varies. But even like one, and it can get costly, one one layer or one, um, uh, just one sheet of linoleum, that's three tests. And if you got the glue behind it, that's four tests because the top can be asbestos. That there's an inner layer that you don't see that can be asbestos. The back of it can be asbestos, and then the glue can be asbestos. So, uh, so I just cut that out, throw it in a Ziploc bag, mail it to the uh, or put it in a pro- once I get back to the shop, put it in a proper bag for uh, for control purposes. Mail it off. They send me a report back. It says yes, it's this percent asbestos or or it's zero percent, or it's non-friable. Again, non-friable means it's not as air, likely to go airborne. I handle non-friable asbestos. I'm not the guy that's going to come and take care of the asbestos that's you know blowing in like popcorn on a gymnasium ceiling. I'm not that guy. So if I remember, I remember in high school, my grandparents wanted to retile the house, and so there was there was a you know stripping away the old. Uh, squares on the floor and um if those if that flooring had asbestos in it would breaking it up to replace it um make them airborne or is it designed to oh really so oops (laughs) and breaking it up (laughs) yeah it was brittle it 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 broke and snapped when you were handling it yeah because you would just kind of try and you know get something to pry it off of the concrete because you know concrete bottom yeah You've got all of this this tiling over it. You just kind of just scrape scraping the heck out of it. So yeah. Well, okay. it's uh, usually asbestos stuff is usually pretty brittle too. So that that sounds sounds like asbestos. Yeah, it, it was a really it was it's a it was a really really 
old. Uh, it's, a, it's an old home, so I, it's a really old uh, flooring material. On the, on the island? Yeah, on the island, yeah. And I don't know much of anything about building structures in Guam at all. So, being a, how, long have, how long have they been a U.S. territory? I have no idea. I'm a bad. I'm bad. I'm terrible at history. But my grandfather, when he moved to the island and got into that type of work, he I mean he he was part of the team that helped build the housing area where he eventually owned. And um, I heard it described as, and I I can confirm that the walls of the the home are solid concrete. You know, not like the uh, the newer mm, homes, yeah. which are which are like cement blocks, you know, and rebar and, and then, you know, filling it with cement, that kind of deal. This was just mm-hmm. solid concrete. I don't know what else was in it, but I remember trying to, trying to install shelving, you know, trying to drill holes to, to put brackets and stuff for the shelves. Like <laughs> I needed special, I needed special drill bits and to try and get some, get a hole in the wall. A special drill bit and a special drill. You need a hammer drill for that one. Yes, I had no what? idea. Yeah, let me know. I'll send you one. You can <laughs> rent one cheaper though next uh, time you want to do that. Yeah, I, I won't need it. I'm not on Guam anymore. <laughs> the, the, the home was pretty old, and the uh, the shutters were aluminum. You know, so okay. you you crank the thing, and the shutters, the the I don't know what you call them, shutters, louvers, or whatever, and they 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 close up and you can't see outside the house. It's it's like a, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's it's. I do, yeah, I yeah. do. <laughs> see, here's a interesting tidbit. What? So I I'm I'm lead lead certified, and uh, in lead classes and since then, obviously, I also subscribe to lead and asbestos type news. But anyway, so you <clears throat> you hear all <clears throat> excuse me, you hear all these politicians talking about, you know how their policies have lowered the crime rate. You always, you know, you hear the crime's been down, you know, it's at a 30 year low and stuff like that. You've heard those kind of news reports somewhere over the years. Well, if you talk to the lead people, they will say it's because since 1978, we haven't been putting new lead in the houses and we've been pulling it out steadily ever since 1978 and lead poisoning. They say, uh, contributes to juvenile delinquency, basically, bad decision behaviors and that sort of thing. And uh, they will tell you that the drop in, it, uh, in in crime is based on the reduction of lead. Don't know how true that is. I don't know. But that's that's what they'll tell you is since the kids uh, and most, most lead poisoning, you know where it happens is uh, two places. Toys made for, you know, toddlers that put everything in their mouth. Toys made in China. And... Um, <clears throat> And then when the toddler grows up and gets tall enough to grab a hold of that windowsill, whenever they're still teething and they start gnawing on that windowsill, uh, that's where most of your lead poisoning comes from. Wow. Wow. The things you learn. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. I knew to keep my kid away from gnawing that stuff when he was teething, but, um, and, and I knew that there, there was a concern if we started gnawing on the railing of his of his crib, you know, uh, that if that crib was somehow finished, had a finished exterior, some sort of coating of mm-hmm. paint that had lead, like that, that's kind of what you're talking about. And and uh, yeah, yeah, not just window sills, but yeah, uh, teething on the on the railings of the cribs and stuff. Yep, that's where they say most of it comes from. Well, unless you live in Flint, Michigan, then it just comes from your pipes. But we well, won't I go think, there. You know, I like to think that I worked really hard to be a juvenile delinquent when I was. Uh, what am I talking about? I still am. Um, you know, I worked really hard at it, and I'm not going to give credit to lead or anything like that. Yeah, we all made uh, some poor decisions when we were in high school. <laughs> yeah, and if anybody's smart enough to, they can find a recording of a conversation that either you and me or both of us, I don't know, and <laughs> we kind of went back and forth with the most, some of the ridiculous things that, we, that, were, that were done. Is that- <laughs> yeah, 
I remember that one. That was funny. That cracks me up. I I, I dug it out. Uh, I dug I dug that recording out uh, a while back, and I, I I swear, Lonnie, that that must have been like the episode that said this was like the pre-service guys podcast sort of test <laughs> you know l- listen to how Lonnie and Ruel kind of go back and forth it's you know they have the makings of something great for the podcast sphere <laughs> Lonnie and yeah, his fork- and Lonnie that's forking the yard <laughs> conversation yeah. <laughs> yeah I actually admitted to that to my daughters the other day I'm like dad you must have been a bad boy I'm like no I was just a kid I thought yeah. it was funny and it, well, and I saw somebody had uh, took some effort. They took a bunch of road cones out of, out of the street and they threw it in somebody's trees. I thought, man, that would have been brilliant. I would <laughs> love to have done that. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, what is your origin story, Mister Restored Restoration? Well, when I was a kid, I used to <laughs> I used to gather, <laughs> you know, roadkill and throw them up on trees, which you never did. It was somebody else. But imagine, like, that's my <laughs> origin. But today, I'm the one that cleans them out of trees, and people pay me money. <laughs> yeah, if I could go back, I would do a few things over. That is for sure. But you live and learn. Yeah. Live and learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, too bad that. Just laughing about the dead animals in the trees. That would have been a good one, too. Awesome. Very cool. Hey, I think we've come up into uh, yep. our, our time slot. We should wrap yep. up. Uh, it's 5 o'clock, my time. Yeah, well, it's good getting on the podcast with just you and me. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah, I enjoy these. Just free flow conversation, two friends talking. You never know if we're going to talk about homeless bums taking a dump in the street or <laughs> or a lead poisoning of your kids or, or what we'll talk about. Yeah, and uh, the typical conversation we have all the time. Yeah, I think we should, you know, give a shout out to all the new, all the all the uh, the listeners and welcome the the new listeners. I hope everybody's enjoying, uh, you know, this. Uh, never thought I'd say it, but it's a business podcast. It's not your traditional business podcast on you know, do businessy things, but, you know, somehow it's evolved into uh, a place where you can learn about other people and their businesses and, uh, and all that good stuff. Pretty cool. So shout outs to everybody out there listening. Yes. And leave us a five star review. There you we go. need them. We like them. We like them. And, yeah. and some nice verbiage. I want to see somebody actually listen to me and say, I'm following directions and I'm telling you that I'm following directions. That'd be kind of funny to see in the, in the review that I'm just, just writing something down. <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you say. Just five star review. Yeah. You don't have I don't to know. Brag on us. Maybe, um, you know, maybe the listeners can let us know as well. You know, um, what do you think about, you know, if you leave a review, you enter, into, you know, I don't know, some sort of contest and, you know, we'll get you something. What do you, what do you think of that sort of <laughs> interaction? We'll get you a Service Guy podcast t-shirt or something or cap. Something that kind of ties into the Service I'll Guy. Mail, I'll mail my business card to you. How about that? <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> business Here's card. one business card. <laughs> I'm just and teasing. I'll, and I'll throw mine in. <laughs> Guess what, business guess cards. what color my, my business card is? My, yeah, guess, guess what color it is? You're asking me or are you asking the listener? Yeah, I'm uh, asking you. What, what color uh, do you think my, my, my business card is? Safety orange? Yep, with blue writing. With blue <laughs> writing. I've had, to pay, I've had to pay attention to that because of all the stuff that's on the website and trying to make yep. sure things match. And... Isn't it a coincidence that the Service Guys podcast kind of has that so co- that color scheme? <laughs> right. I like I like how you, you pulled that one off. <laughs> yeah. Well, the color, I'm getting the, the color to the point. Right. I'm getting to the point. I gotta go get my girlies and go be a dad now. So okay. I've enjoyed catching up with you, Ruel. All right. Thank you, Lonnie. I enjoyed catching up with you. And um, let's wrap up. All right, we'll talk to you all later. Thank you. All right, and uh, we'd like to generally close. You know, this is 
that's Lonnie Beecham on the other end. Restore Restoration, restore dash it dash restoration dot com. And I'm Ruel Abadam, I'm just producing the show. You know, and Lion likes to say, get your life back to normal. Get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It, Restoration. This is Rua with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It, Restoration. No, this is Rua with Service Guys, Service Guys, Service Guys Podcast. <laughs> how you doing, Rua? <laughs> hey, Lonnie. I was letting I was, you go. I was going to see how long you would you would sing to yourself. You best. <laughs> how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Lethargic. Everything okay? Yeah, just just kind of down, kind of, I don't know, didn't sleep great. Weather changing, you know. Gotcha. Well, <clears throat> so we're recording. I mean, I thought we were just kind of free flow. I don't know how comfortable you'd be with free flowing. That's kind of what I do every time. Nice. Uh, well, usually when we do this, you have a topic or two in mind, and then I speak for an hour and not let you talk. <laughs> Yeah, it's a shame how that happens. Um, yeah. So, it was, I almost fell flat on my face. <laughs> You're not trying to run and podcast, are you? No, I was just walking and someone left a, a board on the sidewalk, I guess to cover some damage or some hole on the sidewalk. No, to point out to the idiots that there's something going on there. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. <That's>, yeah. <laughs> Other people out and about just having conversation. Okay. Well, I'm, so, I'm sorry you're feeling down. I'm sorry you're feeling lethargic. I was just, yep, yeah, just need to go home and go to bed. Been dealing with a stupid suit issue for uh, my brother's wedding. That's been a fiasco and a half. Oh, <laughs> so sorry. Don't, don't, don't ever buy suits from Men's Warehouse. And. Uh, 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 yeah. yeah, it's a long story, but they keep canceling my order. I'm like, just get me my suit. I'll make the alterations. I mean, just get it in my hands. Wow. Why would they so, yeah. do that? I don't know. And I guess with my, you get a coat that fits in the chest, then it's down to, you know, then, then my waist is going to have to be taken in like four inches. Uh, for most guys with a 50 regular chest, I guess their bellies are four inches four to six inches bigger than mine so it's like uh, just i'll just get me the suit i'll just cinch up the belt and button my jacket i'm just wearing it for a wedding that's it i don't wear and you it get to the her. get to the wedding and then just lick her up and nothing will matter anyways right well yeah i doubt any of that will be happening so so yeah that's wild yeah that's the city i don't know how i got yeah. here I come from a small little island and i'm stuck in a big city yeah huh? is that the only place you've lived in, in the states is san francisco area yeah yeah okay i mean it wasn't in in san francisco when i when i moved here it was uh south of a place called bailey city and uh it's just foggy as heck most of the time didn't make any sense then we moved east over the bay and uh, left the fog behind and we could live like normal people and get some get some sunshine and uh, work sometimes takes me into the city depending on who I'm working for and where I'm working yeah in my area we can have four seasons in one day oh no kidding yeah I can wake up with snow you know get it to be about 40 degrees and then start raining and then um, yeah we can have springtime thunderstorms in the afternoon and then by early evening, we can be back into the 90s. I mean, we, we could get it all in one day. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, growing up, it's it's uh, it's in a tropical climate. You know, you wouldn't get flash flash rain, downpour. Then it would clear up and then get the sun, and it would be nice. Some parts of the year, it's, it's there's not as much rain, and it's stinking hot. And then some parts of the year, it's just rain is just a season in itself. Yeah. Yeah, with the periodic typhoons and super typhoons and tropical storms that that come into play and folks have to board up their windows with you know with uh with things to make sure that the glass doesn't break and things don't fly into the house that sounds always fun <laughs> it is yeah it is and then when then when the 
when the power shuts off over the island, you know, there's a level of peace and calm because you don't have all the electronics kind of humming and going going around and, and devices sure, and sure. stuff. And then you're just, you know, watching the rain blow sideways and <laughs> just play cards and, and uh, the candlelight. <laughs> I miss nice. it, actually. Yeah. Back to hmm. basics. Back to basics. So what's going on in oh, your world? Gotta... Should, should, we, should we do a pod? Should we kind of do an official intro and then uh, kind of just catch up and uh, maybe do a recap or not re- an official recap, but maybe talk about like, you know, who we had hoped to get on. I don't know if you want to crack that open or just talk about, you know, how, how things uh, have been going. I would leave that one open since okay. it may not even happen. Okay. They haven't gotten back about Tuesday yet, so. That's true. Yeah. Cool. She might just be impolite and not want to say. Leave me alone. <laughs> Aw. Well, she got. She, yeah. she, has, she has to listen to the Andy episode to, to, to find out what she's getting into. Then she'll realize yeah. we're right. harmless. <laughs> right. Oh, she knows us pretty well. So, so yeah. Let's introduce. You started off today. Okay. Service guys. Service guys. Service guys podcast. <laughs> this is another coffee with heavy cream production. <laughs>